When scientists and farmers work together, they can achieve a high production partnership. That's why the Minnesota Soybean Research and Promotion Council has nearly 20 research projects underway with scientists at the University of Minnesota. Let's see how some of these research projects can lead to smarter soybean farming. I know that soybean cyst nematodes are one of the most destructive pests affecting U.S. soybeans. What can I do to better manage them on my farm and what are U of M scientists doing to help prevent them from destroying our yields? The uh, nematode was first detected in Minnesota in 1984 and pretty rapidly spread across Minnesota. Soybean cyst nematode eggs are laid in the soil and those larvae hatch. They move towards the root system, they're attracted towards the soybean roots, and they'll actually penetrate the root system in the process of feeding and forming a feeding site. Soybean cyst nematode can affect yields uh, quite dramatically, you know, up to 50%, maybe a little bit more if you have a disease interaction. You get the loss from the nematode feeding, you can get an additional loss from fungi entering that root system. The above ground symptoms are fairly hard to see with soybean cyst nematode. Maybe looking for something very subtle, uh, area of the field where the, the plant growth is a little stunted, the canopy's closing a little bit slowly. If they've got areas of the field that are yielding poor, fields that continue to lag and in, in yield behind other ones, and you look at soybean root systems, you can either see a fairly typical damage that they cause, or even the female uh, bodies protruding from the roots. Heavily infested root systems tend to get real dark and real fine roots. So you can see a little bit of that here. But here's a female that's, that's uh, pretty well developed. Uh, these come out and they start out white. They'll, as they age, they'll turn yellow uh, as, they're, as they're mature. And then the, gradually they'll turn tan uh, and fall off these root systems. What happens is that tanned body is actually where those eggs are allowed to persist a little bit longer. The eggs are resistant to weathering, but that cyst, that tan female, actually helps them persist longer. Now, we, just because we're not seeing a lot of nematodes doesn't mean we don't have a nematode issue here. Just don't uh, assume that you can look at a field one time, see nothing, and assume you're okay. We're in between generations yeah. right now. We're just starting another one. Uh, one of the things that sometimes we'll see is beans turning yellow unexplainably. It, it may be an herbicide application, it may be uh, some real wet soil, but sometimes it's just that weather is triggering another hatch of nematodes and you get a lot of larvae attacking the roots and, and you'll see some symptoms above, above ground. The major emphasis on soybean cyst nematode management has been breeding efforts with host plant resistance. And it'll continue to be because we're starting to see nematode populations that can get around the most commonly used source of resistance, and that's 88, PI88788. Right now, our two main way of dealing with soybean cyst nematodes is with crop rotation, extending the, the non-host crop period between soybean crops, okay? and with resistant varieties. The more of those genes you get across, the more highly resistant that variety is. Because it's got several genes, there's not gonna be a simple, quick GMO fix where we can insert a single gene. We're actually looking for sources of resistance in plants other than soybeans, but it, again, it's a slow, painful process to breed for these, especially if you wanna have high yields. Once farmers get a good nematode management plan in place, using resistant varieties, maybe extending a rotation if, if it's a severe, uh, severe infestation, you start to see those numbers come down. And in a lot of fields right now, we've made some pretty good progress and, and those numbers have dropped considerably from what they have been. But that's why we want to make sure that we're maintaining those resistance sources. We have a way to uh, manage those nematode populations because without them, they're gonna ratchet right back up and, and get into that high yield loss category. As soybean farmers, when you transform discoveries from science into higher yields in the field, you're providing the world with an abundant supply of safe and affordable food. You're advancing America's energy security through renewable biofuels, and you're protecting the environment by sustaining natural resources and building Minnesota's economy through higher productivity and profitability.